Hello, welcome to the Beniverse. My name is Ben Friedman, and today I am talking about the newest release Guillermo del Toro movie starring Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, Rooney Mara, Ron Perlman, Willem Dafoe, Richard Jenkins, just an incredible crazy ensemble cast and that is Nightmare Alley which had an installment released in the 1940s based on the book as well Nightmare Alley and this film follows Bradley Cooper who is a man with a mysterious past who basically runs away and goes into the circus to start new and he meets Rooney Mara who ends up being the love of his life and it leads to them meeting a mysterious figure played by Kate Planchette, who ends up being even more dangerous than Bradley Cooper is, as we learn in the film. And that's all I'm going to give, because that's all I really knew about this film going in. In fact, I actually probably knew less about this film going in. I didn't know that there was this dynamic between Bradley Cooper and Kate Planchette. But what this is what works so well about the film is the dynamic between the performers here. Bradley Cooper has a such an intensity in... His performance, which is something I've never quite seen from him. I've heard people suggest that he might be miscast, and I personally did not feel like that. I thought he grew into the character well, and as we see this guy transition, so does Bradley Cooper's acting uh, follow that type of transition that the character is doing. I think the character is supposed to start off a little and awkward and uncomfortable in his body, essentially. And Blanchett plays the role really well off of him just being able to be a mysterious figure but it one that exudes power you always feel like she has something up her sleeve which we never know about and that's one of the great things about this movie it has tricks up its sleeve that i wasn't ready for and didn't know what to expect coming into it and really even leaving it it left me with a lot of questions and I think a film like this is provocative for those questions it asks, but also in the way that it's told. It reminded me a lot of Christopher Nolan's Prestige with just the dynamic between these two characters. And it's almost this power struggle going throughout the film. But aside from the performances, which are all great, and I really do think Bradley Cooper is going to earn a Best Actor nomination. And I think Kate Blanchett has a really good chance of earning... I would say she's probably supporting actress, but if they categorized her as a lead, I would understand as well. But I think their performances are quite good. But really what stands out in this film is Guillermo del Toro's direction. He is the master of atmosphere. I've never seen anything quite like this since Alfred Hitchcock. The set design of the carnival is creepy. It feels intimate and it feels almost ghouly like there's this griminess to the uh carnival scene that it never feels welcoming but at the same time it does have that kind of carnival fun feel to it this film is not without its fair share of fun and laughter to be had there are some amusing scenes in this film but they all serve the purpose of telling the story that del toro is trying to convey of power of ruthlessness it just tells this story of a person sinking to the lowest and in that way i think guillermo del toro's lighting and just the way he frames shows a man kind of rising and falling it is hubris at its best it feels shakespearean in that times because of where this character goes and where he ends he is walks that fine line if he just feels really human but at a certain point you question where his reality is and like i said guillermo del toro just is able to bring that atmosphere and feeling that direction but he also gets the most out of these actors and he gets the most out of just the whole crew the cinematography is great the lighting's great the sound design's great the score is great the performances are all like i said Excellent. Willem Dafoe gives a great supporting performance. But also, from my understanding, he's really reinvented the source material. I went back and read the synopsis for the 1940s one, and I think 
based on the story that that one's trying to tell, I think Guillermo del Toro tells it more interestingly. The ending that happens in this film is much more provocative and striking. And that doesn't have a typical Hollywood ending. There is a level of intensity seen in these performances that doesn't happen unless Guillermo del Toro takes the two hour, two and a half hour runtime to get to these characters to these certain places. So that by the end of it, when some of these characters feel exhausted, you are just as exhausted with them. It Somebody described it kind of similarly to how the Safdie brothers direct, where it's kind of bottled up chaos. This film feels more like controlled, tempered chaos. You know something's going to go wrong, and you know there's a lot more secrets that this film has that it's not divulging. But everything has a little bit more of a pace. Everything feels a little bit more structured. It's when those reveals happen, you never feel them likely going to happen because they're shocking and they almost seem like side stories and then they end up being the main points. The story zigs when it should zag. And I think that's just a really an accomplishment that Guillermo del Toro makes as a director. It's something, like I said, that's so unique and it takes that gothic noir feel to it and it incorporates it with kind of his mysticism as a director. It's not a what I thought it was going to be is I thought it was going to be a monster film just based on who I know del Toro to be as a director. It's not that. They are all human beings and they're all flawed. And for that, I just must, I must commend del Toro for just capturing something so personal and beautiful and kind of just crafting a modern day noir with his sensibilities. So Nightmare Alley, it ended up being one of my favorite films of the year, despite not knowing anything about it. And I'd really suggest you check it out. I think this film is fun is not the right word to describe it, but it's interesting. It has so much in it and it's so layered and it's so complicated that I would understand why people maybe don't gravitate or even feel like the emotions aren't there in this film. But I think what is at what is at play and what is so obvious for anybody who watches it besides the great performances is that Guillermo del Toro is trying something very new, but also using the classic Hollywood structure to tell a story that would otherwise be a little bit too hard to handle. Otherwise truly something wonderful. And yeah, I really suggest nightmare alley. It's out in theaters right now. It kind of got overshadowed this weekend because of Spider-Man No Way Home, also starring Willem Dafoe, which also should teach us. Willem Dafoe is one of the greatest actors working right now, if not the best one, and everything he is in is great, and he gives great performances. We already knew that, but just another week where that's even more evident. So that's my review of Nightmare Alley. Check it out. If you have seen it, let me know what you think. And yeah, uh, this week we are talking the film home alone with our guest film at 50 himself mr brian rowe will be on the show and for christmas we're dropping a b-roll about a christmas story in christmas memories so thank you guys for listening check that out and if you like this make sure to like and subscribe i'm ben friedman follow me at the beniverse on instagram at twitter and follow ben and brand see a movie drops every friday at 9 a.m thanks guys take care bye bye